Hello, today on the Fat Man's Guide, we're going to be talking about the A100 and how to prep as far as the equipment that you're going to need to be successful. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Fat Man's Guide. Today, we're going to be again talking about the A100. In particular, we're going to be talking about the equipment that is needed to be successful in this event. Again, a lot of the things that uh, uh, I do as far as equipment goes, again, comes from uh, failing at the A100 five times, now going into my sixth attempt uh, in the ten years that we've had uh, uh, the event. And uh, so a lot of things that I like, some of you may not, and there might be some other folks that have been successful in the A100 or other uh, types of events that they might be a little bit different. But this is just the stuff that I've learned to like, uh, and I think the things that have, have helped me improve over the years, and, and hopefully will this year uh, get me able to finish the 100. Uh, what I've really tried to do is kind of break the equipment down into things that uh, obviously that you're going to wear, things that you're going to bring with you, and uh, other things that uh, are going to be in the pack. Now, a couple of things to remember. First, I'm not going to be trying to sell any particular brands because, to be honest, most of my stuff is cheap. A lot of it's Walmart stuff. Um, I don't really have the budget to go out and get the best and lightest stuff imaginable. Uh, not that that stuff's bad. Uh, I just did stuff that I can't afford. Uh, the other thing that uh, you need to understand is while looking at this pack, um, I'm trying to get a target weight of about 10 to 14 pounds. The lighter the better uh, to allow me to be able to move quicker and again uh, to hopefully allow for less stress on the body. So first, what I'm going to start out with is I'm going to start out with the stuff that you're going to be used to carrying all this. Um, the first thing I have here is, uh, is my pack. Uh, my pack, uh, I think as the kids like to say, this particular pack is my ride or die. This pack is just a cheap uh, outdoor products from Walmart. Uh, but uh, this pack has been with me through just about everything. You know, I have a couple packs I do for long distance, but my day hikes, my training hikes, all, almost all, all but one of my A100s has been with this particular pack. Uh, and again, when you get the pack, the things you're looking for, uh, whether or not it feels comfortable, um, is it light, that's always important. Again, uh, if you're looking at the pack as well, I, I know it's not a long distance packing trip, but I'm trying to look for uh, proper straps, a hip belt, um, everything that's going to make it easier to carry with this particular bag. Now, one of the things that I end up losing uh, with uh, that bag is it doesn't have any hip pockets. So I end up uh, utilizing, again, a, uh, a hip pack. Uh, that way I can be able to put food, uh, any of the other items that I might need very, very quickly. I, I put in this. Um, the next thing that uh, I'm going to end up using, again, uh, from a, a product standpoint is uh, trekking poles. Um, this year I'm utilizing some new trekking poles because uh, I've been being made fun of by my hiking friends because I've been using the same ones for the last five, six years. Uh, these are carbon fiber poles, very, very light. More importantly, you need the poles because they're going to help you be able to accomplish the hike by taking stress off of your body. Um, again, when you're hiking up hills, by using trekking poles, you have an opportunity to be able to use your upper body. Uh, when you're going down hills, being able to put that downward force is going to be able to take stress off your knees, your uh, ankles, hips, and everything else. So hiking poles to me are unbelievably important. Some of the other things that I'm going to end up taking with me, uh, again, obviously I'm going to take my camera, uh, which I, I am presently filming with, uh, take my cell phone. Uh, now, granted, with my cell phone, it's going to be off the whole time. You're not going to get a whole lot of reception out in the ANF. I have it mostly just in case there's a major emergency. Uh, I keep all of my electronics uh, in one of these little frog tog bags uh, to keep them dry. So this has got my cables. I've got a, a, a recharger uh, in here. I've got all the other little things I might need from a technology standpoint. I also take an uh, EasyTrex 10 Garmin. Uh, again, this is more so for me so that I can keep track of how many miles I've moved. That allows me to be able to meet my goals. It, it's more so for my mental health than anything else. I already know the trail pretty well. This kind of keeps me on target. I'm also, again, going to end up taking my sunglasses, obviously, if it gets bright out. Um, and uh, for myself, I'm always wearing a cap. I have a cap I, I've been wearing uh, for the longest time. Uh, it keeps sun off my head. I'll be able to keep sweat out of my eyes. Uh, you're not a real hiker, of course, if you don't have the buff. Uh, everyone needs to have a buff. 
Uh, and I'm not the, real, the world's biggest buff guy, but uh, I do like it for being able to keep my neck warm if for some reason at night it gets cool, uh, keep my head warm. It's really good for me from get, keeping sweat out of my eyes. I mean, it's, it's a multi-purpose tool, so you have to have that. And uh, a couple of things that I also take with me, uh, I take a pair of gloves. Uh, number one, uh, if, if you're, it gets cold out at the, in the evenings, these are going to keep your hands warm. Last thing you want to do is not feel comfortable. That's an easy way to start falling apart emotionally. Uh, the other thing is that your hands can tend to get raw, especially if you sweat a lot or if for some reason uh, it rains a lot, gets really uh, moist out, uh, these will be able to take some of that beating. I also take a winter cap. Uh, take the winter cap again just as a preventive measure it's not that heavy but if I do get a cold evening and uh, and I'm not feeling comfortable I can put this on again you lose a lot of your heat through your head so uh, you know I take this it's it's definitely worth taking something else I also take is I take a uh, iPod or mp3 player with a set of headphones uh, and again a lot of people have been hiking already know this that uh, if you end up getting into a difficult time period, being able to blast some tunes can kind of get you lifted up. I've also started uh, putting on a lot of podcasts and listening to podcasts as well. I, I like those actually at night because then I can kind of just focus on the podcast instead of being weirded out uh, with the darkness. So I, I definitely would advise having uh, a, you know, a, an iPod or an MP3 player to be able to do that as well. Now, as far as gear that I'm going to be wearing, uh, it's going to be very, very simple. Again, you're trying to get as far as you can. You don't want to be taking a lot of extra stuff. Um, myself, personally, I wear one t-shirt. I wear a pair of mesh shorts. Um, and uh, I wear a pair uh, of socks with liners. Uh, I would say this. I don't take an extra shirt. I don't take extra shorts. Uh, a lot of people think you're going to stink. You're hiking. You're going to stink. Uh, but I will take three pairs of socks. And my reasoning behind that is, to me, your foot health is more important than anything else you're going to do on this trip. Um, if, you're, if you can keep your feet dry and keep them from uh, being blistered, you can go a long ways. If you end up getting blistered feet in the first uh, 20 miles, you're probably not going to make it much further than that. Uh, and so to me, I like to utilize darn tough socks. Um, again, they're very expensive, but I've, I've uh, in my uh, opinion, learned that they do a really good job of wicking the moisture from my feet. I also have moisture wicking socks, a liner that I put underneath them. Um, I like those again. It keeps my feet dry. I get a lot less blisters. Now, in talking about feet, then I talk about shoes. A lot of people have different ways of looking at shoes. Um, I, I, there's only a couple things that I've learned with it. The biggest thing for me is, and I learned this last year, I, I'm not a fan of Gore-Tex. I like it in a day hike, I like it any other time, but not on this hike. And the big reason why is the Gore-Tex keeps the water out. But if you get into a rainstorm, and I experienced this last year, it doesn't let the moisture out, which then makes it very, very difficult to keep your feet dry. Um, so for that reason, I won't wear Gore-Tex. As far as shoes go, I've worn everything from a hiking boot to this spring. I've been uh, wearing trail runners. I really like the trail runners. Uh, they're, they're not waterproof. They allow my feet to breathe. They're a lot lighter. Um, I, and I know a lot of people say well, they want ankle stability. I get that. I happen to have two really bad ankles. Matter of fact, uh, uh, this, almost three years ago, uh, during the A100, I actually broke my ankle. And ultimately, it led to me having to have a, a reconstructive surgery for my foot. So I do get that. But what I do is, is I have a, a nice set of ankle braces that I wear. Um, and then I wear those, uh, those um, trail runners. And, and I feel like I've got enough support while keeping uh, the shoe light. Uh, but the biggest thing is you have to make sure that you're comfortable and that those shoes uh, mold and fit to your feet really well. Now, as far as extra stuff that I'm bringing, there's not a whole lot extra that I'm going to bring. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to bring is, uh, again, I'm going to uh, bring two long sleeve uh, microfiber shirts. Uh, anyone who hikes knows the most important thing you can do is have layers. And for me, um, I can wear these two layers, and that's going to help me a lot if I get cold in the evening. Also, I'm going to bring extra socks. Uh, as I already said, uh, I'm going to bring three pairs of socks. And, and what I do is I rotate through those about every three hours. I try to keep my feet fresh. Uh, my experience has been if I do that, I get, I get a much better return uh, on, on my hiking. Uh, so what I'll do is, is after I get a pair, as long as it's not raining, I'll let them dry in the back of my pack so that about every nine hours I'm replacing with the original set of socks, hopefully keeping my feet dry. 
Uh, the other thing that I'm going to end up bringing is I'm going to bring a rain jacket. Uh, and again, not only just for the rain, but I'm going to bring a rain jacket because of the fact that it, it's actually a third or fourth layer uh, for warmth. Uh, again, it keeps the rain out, but um, and I wear this during the winter, this particular rain jacket. It keeps the heat in. So if you get tonight, instead of bringing a fleece or something else, you can just bring this rain jacket, and you can wear that. You can zip it down however you want to, and that will keep the heat in as well. So it actually ends up being another layer, and it's a lot lighter. So for water, um, normally what I've done is I've always had one of these Camelback, you know, bags, and uh, they've been really good. Uh, I've felt a lot more comfortable with them because of the fact that I'm allowed, you know, I'm able to have, you know, two liters of water. But again, that all weighs quite a bit, and, and I'm kind of a water freak, so therefore I always want to have water with me. Um, this year, what I'm going to try to do is I'm actually going to try to not utilize that as much. Instead. I'm going to go back to when I first started hiking before I got the Camelback, and I'm going to go back to having two water bottles. And, and what I'll do is I'll use the two water bottles. You know, I have one of these uh, smart water bottles it's just about everyone's using now. Um, and, uh, and I'll utilize uh, the Sawyer Mini uh, to be able to clear my water out utilizing this. And then I'll also carry a larger Gatorade bottle. That way I can take this water, put it in the Gatorade bottle. And the nice thing about the trail and the ANF is most of the parts you have a water about every two or three miles max and so there's plenty of places to get water there's there's only two exceptions um, and for that reason this year I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the camel back for those two long sections uh, but for the rest of it I'm really gonna try to do this and I think that can cut back on my weight almost two pounds from what I normally do all right so the next thing I want to talk about is a headlamp and and I want to say with the headlamp do not buy a cheap headlamp Get yourself a good headlamp, especially if, again, you're doing the 100, the 75, which is ultimately what we're trying to accomplish. Um, with this headlamp uh, that I have here, this is a Coleman. Uh, this is a newer one I'm using this year. My old one took a beating uh, finally last year. Uh, first thing you want to look at is the lumens. Um, this particular one here is 250 lumens. Um, that's more than enough uh, to be able to give you uh, ample vision at night. Um, you want to make sure that you, you have a, a light that is going to be able to um, brighten up everywhere that you're trying to look. And it's also going to make you feel a lot more comfortable. Now, along this line with this, um, I also take a backup one, one of these smaller, cheaper ones. Now, I know a lot of people probably say that's overkill, but last year when I was doing it, I've been using the same headlamp for a couple years, and, uh, and it was about 12 miles in, and my headlamp shut off. And now I'm out there in the dark. A100 first night, and I don't have a headlamp. Uh, I was able to dig into my bag, get this. I was able to work through the rest of the night with this smaller one. Next day, I took a break at some point, messed around with the light. I was able to, to get it to work again, extend its life a little bit. But if it hadn't been for me taking this extra headlamp, my, my A100 was done. At that point, I wouldn't have had any hope to be able to finish it. So I think this is worth taking because, again, you know, uh, if, if you're going to make that 100, you're going to have to hike at night. Last but uh, definitely not least, a lot of people are always worried about their safety and they're going to take a first aid kit. Um, I, my first aid kit, uh, kit that I take is not really complicated. Uh, if, if you're out there and you need a first aid kit, if it's bad enough, your A100 is done anyways, you're going to stop at the closest road, of which there's a road about every five miles, and even less in some places, and you're going to get help. So for me, uh, I take a very simple first aid kit. This is pretty much it. Um, I got some band-aids, I've got some gauze pads, um, I've got some antibiotic ointment. Um, I also end up taking uh, some athletic tape and some pre-wrap just in case something needs wrapped up, but again, nothing too, uh, too heavy. One of the things I always have with me is Luco tape, uh, and again, uh, I know some people are real big into moleskin. I don't like moleskin. Uh, I've had some uh, negative experiences with it, probably on my own, and that uh, I just don't understand how to use it. I don't know what it is. But, uh, you know, this Luco tape to me is pretty dummy proof. Uh, it's outstanding for blisters, uh, forms right to the skin. It's awesome stuff. So I always have that. Another thing that I always uh, am ready for is chafing. I, I can't tell you how many people, different people I've seen who have chafing issues. I know, uh, you know, it's definitely a problem for me. So not to be selling products, but uh, I love uh, Bordeaux's butt paste. Um, this is obviously made for babies, so you know it, I don't see any reason why it can't work for uh, uh, adults. And it's been awesome for me. I, I have this in every single pack that I have, um, just just in case you end up getting any chafing. I think you want to be prepared for that. And then the last thing that I have is I just have some random stuff. 
you know, um, you're talking about Advil and uh, iodine drops, stuff like that. And that's pretty much what I end up taking from a standpoint of first aid. Now, again, uh, in, in preparing for the A100 and looking at gear, there's a couple things to remember. Uh, if, if you're just planning on doing the 25 or the 50, you, you, you're going to have a normal pack. You're going to have a tent. You're going to have everything else. But if you're trying to get the 75 to 100, you're going to want to drop the weight. And the other thing is you're not going to have uh, you know, a lot of need for a lot of the extra items because you're going to have to be pushing hard the whole time. Uh, and again, what I'm trying to get to is, is a pack weight of about 10 to 14 pounds. Last year I was about 14. I think right now I can get myself whittled down to about 12 to 11. Um, that's kind of my hope. Well, thanks for being here today with me as we've been talking about the A100 and what kind of gear I'm using. And maybe it just gives you some thoughts about some gear you want to use. Uh, if you have any questions or other thoughts, uh, please leave it in the comment section below. Um, next time uh, on the Fat Man's Guide, I hope to start talking about the trail itself. I want to be able to do a, uh, a northern section, 50 miles, uh, where I want to go through the map and tell you about what areas to think about as far as difficult time periods, some of the areas where you can be able to pick up some uh, speed, some of the areas you might struggle with, and, and maybe give you some thoughts on what my plans are as far as my timetable uh, and, and what I'm planning on doing. Well, that's our episode for today. Again, thanks for being here. Uh, if you did, if uh, you haven't done so yet, we'd love to have you like or subscribe, and uh, and hopefully we'll see you here for the next episode when we start talking about the trail and uh, give you some ideas of of how it's laid out. Again, thank you for being here, and as always, live life to the fullest without excuses. See ya.